Welcome everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you three proven B2B lead generation strategies, tactics, and ideas to 10x bookings. And I don't mean to start this video out being a hater, but I know there's a lot of YouTube gurus out there that teach you these strategies and they don't really have any real life experience. But luckily for you today, I actually do. So I'm going to give you a real life look under the hood of the things that I've done. So I'm going to share the top lead generation strategies that I've used to help build three B2B companies, okay? And if you're new to the channel and you're not familiar with how I do some of these little presentations, this is a Notion doc. The link is in the description of the video. So you can actually take it and make a copy. All right, so what I can promise you in this video is that first we're gonna explore those three ways to, to help with B2B lead generation, those ideas to help you 10X your bookings. But if you follow the strategies in the video, then I can almost guarantee that you're gonna see a very significant increase in your lead generation and your booking rates, okay? And by mastering it, you're going to one, generate more high quality leads consistently, right? A lot of businesses, they kind of have this up and down, inconsistent, lead generation strategy, which basically means you have inconsistent sales growth, okay? Inconsistent bookings. All right, you're gonna increase your sales pipeline and close more deals. You're gonna become more efficient and effective in your marketing efforts and also your sales efforts, okay? And you're gonna be able to build a sustainable lead generation system that supports long-term growth. It's not just a growth hack, it's not just a gimmick, right? So there's a lot of these little growth hacks and things that help generate leads, but they don't last very long. Okay, so what I'm gonna focus on is showing you sustainable mechanisms to help you with that. Does that sound good? If so, let's get started. Again, if you're not familiar with me, my name is Patrick Spielman. I am the founder and CEO of Uptix, which is a sales automation CRM. And I've helped tens of thousands of salespeople and marketers, along with over 3,000 plus customers, boost their sales with some of these strategies. Okay. I'm also a former six time award winning top 10 master franchisee at a company called Sculpture Hospitality. And I built and ran a seven figure sales agency. So I've actually done all of these strategies and I still do, okay? But that's enough about me. Let's dive into how you can use these lead generation strategies for your business. So the three that I'm gonna go over, one are inbound, okay? And there's multiple. So I said three proven strategies, right? But these are actually pillars. So I'm gonna give you multiple strategies within each one of these, okay? Inbound, outbound, and then inbound, outbound, okay? So there's a little bit of a difference. So let's get into inbound first, all right? The first one, word of mouth referrals and networking, okay? So obviously like this is where most people start in business, okay? It, with just word of mouth and referrals. And it's a great channel, okay, to get business by getting your current customers or even your friends, your relatives, other people in the industry to refer you business, okay? It can be very, very powerful to get referrals, right? But here's the problem is it's a slow way to grow, but it has high conversions, okay? At some point in time, you might want to grow outside of this. And that's ultimately what I'm gonna focus on in the rest of this video, are strategies to help you grow outside of just networking and referrals, if that's all you're really, really leaning on to help you with growth, okay? So one of the ways that you can do that, at least with word of mouth and referrals, outside of all these other strategies, if you did wanna accelerate your word of mouth or networking and referrals, is be proactive. I know this sounds stupid simple, but you can actually use some automation. You could use a tool like Uptix, my product, to help you automate word of mouth and referrals and networking, asking existing customers for introductions. You could actually accelerate this if you wanted to make this a pillar for your growth strategy. All right. The next one under inbound is of course, organic mar marketing. So creating valuable content that attracts your target audience through, you know, blogs, newsletters, LinkedIn content, YouTube videos, is a great way to grow your business. Okay. It does take longer, of course. Okay. So there's a lot of effort that goes into it in the front end, but it kind of scales on on the back end, at least maybe like a YouTube or, or blogging, right? Maybe not a newsletter because once you send a newsletter, it usually doesn't get, you know, too much traction. All right. But it helps you establish your authority in your field. Okay. And what I see a lot of problems with, with businesses, the day and age, especially the ones that just want to do like outbound, for instance, is they don't have an organic strategy and it doesn't really help long-term growth by not staying top of mind or becoming an authority in your market space. Okay. 
So high quality blog posts. I don't love blog posts. We don't do a ton of them. We do more newsletters, full transparency there. That's why I said blogs and newsletters. We do mostly YouTube content, okay? But you can use it to drive traffic to your site, nurture leads. And the good part, especially about video, you're watching this video now, is it's incredibly effective, okay? It's basically a 24 seven salesperson and it gets you leads and that helps those leads know you, trust you, and even like you, which is fantastic, right? That's like kind of what we want to do. I'll give you a little look under the hood with uh, with mine. So at the time of this this recording here, I've got about 250,000 views on YouTube. Not bad. Almost 19,000 watch hours. That's not bad. I've done YouTube content pretty inconsistently over the years. I've been a busy founder. I've ran three companies, you know, all at one time at one point. Now I just have upticks and that's my only focus. But my only regret with YouTube content is just not being consistent with it. Okay. That's it. That's all. And, but at that being said, it's one of those channels that's nice because I create a video. And if I do a good job with SEO and stuff like that on YouTube, it keeps producing views day in and day out. So I build it the thing one time and it keeps producing. Now there's some deprecation in results over the course of time. No doubt. So you got to kind of keep up with it, so to speak, but it can keep growing and growing and growing. All right. The next organic that I would talk about here is LinkedIn. This has kind of been a little bit of a bread and butter, similar to YouTube. The only thing is it doesn't scale after you post. So like you make a post and you know, it, you know, over a course of maybe a day or two, you get attention from it. Right. But it's a good way to stay top of mind in your niche. Here's us a little look at some of my LinkedIn stats. Okay. I've had about a million impressions, I don't know, seven and a half thousand likes, 5,000 comments. 90 shares, sharing isn't a huge thing on LinkedIn, um, you know, engagement rate. I've done 473 posts over this timeline that I pulled, which I think was a couple of years or something. So, oh, here we go, 1,110 days. So I'm doing a post about every other day. And just like YouTube, I kind of regret not being as consistent as I possibly could. So I've gone through kind of peaks and valleys. We get busy with doing different initiatives with, with the business, the company, and this is where like, we're, we're still growing as a business. So, you know, hiring more people and stuff like that is a course thing that you need to do over time. And a thing that we're also working on. All right. And if you, if you calculate these impressions based on like what you might pay for paid ads, for instance, let's give it a generous $35 CPM, uh, which is, very generous on LinkedIn. It's much higher than this, but I mean, that's like $38,000 in earned media. All right. Now it took me a lot of time to do this, but it's also helped establish my, my me as with, with credibility in the, in the marketplace, you know, a trusted resource in the, you know, outbound and outreach and, you know, sales community and, you know, gotten other people to like me, some people to hate me, you know, it can be controversial once in a while, but, uh, but it's, it's a great channel. Okay. So those are some of the more organic marketing strategies there. Okay. Next one is paid advertising. I've done quite a bit of paid advertising, which of course you can use to generate potential leads quickly and effectively. The problem with this is, is it's really expensive on the front and it doesn't really scale on the back end like organic does where organic, you got to put a lot of effort in, in the beginning and it can kind of scale up and you don't have to keep feeding the machine where paid ads, you got to keep feeding the machine with your dollars, right? So it, it kind of scales, I guess, linearly. And, but it, it's, it's great to generate traffic leads right now. Okay. And I've used more or less Facebook ads a lot. I've done LinkedIn ads, of course, as, as well, quite a bit, cause we're in B2B. All right. So the biggest thing here is to use like some sort of value-based approach use a webinar or what's called a video sales letter, which is effectively a shorter version of a webinar. This isn't a full training on how to do webinars or anything like that. All right. But what you can do if you want to learn from some of the paid advertising that I've done is you can do something called funnel hacking, where you take a look at other funnels, you analyze it, you optimize it, and you see how you can use that as a framework to maximize conversions. If you want to do that, there's a link right here. You can hack my funnel. All right. This funnel ha produces pretty well. I could always do better for sure. Th these are the stats in the last 30 days. I guess we've generated three or 781 clicks. I don't know what this actions thing is. I'm not sure my tracking software. This is a software called click magic, by the way, if you wanted to get into attribution tracking engagements are leads. 
So of the 781 people who visited the page effectively, about 19% opted in and it cost me about $17 each. So some of these opt-ins came from paid ads. Some of them came from just organic, right? They came to the Uptix website from a YouTube video, from maybe a cold email we sent, maybe a newsletter, all different traffic, LinkedIn content all this kind of stuff. So this is kind of an aggregation of all the traffic that we're getting to go to the website, right? And we have this one main funnel, we call it, that generates us leads outside of people signing up for our software, okay? And in the last 30 days, 51 of them have booked, this says sales, it's actually not sales, it's a booking. So in Click Magic, you can't change the names of these, but uh, so we recognize booking based on after they've booked on a Calendly link, so 51 of them have auto booked. This isn't counting my sales team, all right? So these are people that basically just book directly through our funnel. So we're getting, you know, one to two leads a day. And by leads, these are bookings, like meetings on the calendar, all right? And this is, again, it's like, although I'm talking about paid ads here, this this is actually a collection of, of all the traffic, organic, paid, so on and so forth. But in terms of paid here, so far with upticks, I've spent about $88,000 on ads. All right, I spent much more than that for my agency. And we are in the process of trying to scale these, but just to kind of show you, this is my actual ads account, okay, 88,000. This is one of our current campaigns right now that we're running, generated about 447 leads. A Little bit higher cost of lead than what I've gotten in the past. I can't scroll down on this, but in the past I've gotten anywhere from five to $15 leads. But with this funnel, it's more targeted and the, all the lead costs are higher, we're getting higher quality leads. So that's an important thing when you're running paid ads. Sometimes cheap leads aren't always better, okay? Sometimes cheap leads are actually worse because then you hand those leads off to your sales team and they're spending and wasting a bunch of time on leads that really aren't that great, okay? So I've done a lot of things with like landing page copy and stuff like that that helps kind of attract the leads we, we want. Although it's not perfect, you know, it's, it's producing. My word of advice here with paid ads for your lead generation though, is to be methodical. If you haven't done paid ads in the past, you don't want to scale up too soon and just blow your money because there are a lot of learning lessons that go in into paid ads. Okay. I would recommend starting at 50 to hundred dollars a day. If you can't afford this paid ads are not something that you should be doing right away. You should be doing some of these other strategies, organic and some of the other ones that I'm going to get into in just a second that are much cheaper to to sustain in the short term, especially if you're, you know, just starting out, your bootstrap, so on and so forth. But if you do have the budget, then I would definitely do it. The only other downside is that Facebook ads might not be for everybody, right? Maybe LinkedIn ads, maybe Google ads. Okay. It doesn't really matter what ad platform, you're just getting attention, getting leads. You can still drive them to the same funnel the same landing page and again you can you can funnel hack me so check out how i do it all right now to get into so that was inbound let's get into outbound of course so there's cold email cold email is super popular this day and age it's always getting harder and harder of course to do but it's very economical to get attention so it's good for you know early stage companies and even growth stage when you get into having a sales team and all that kind of stuff but you can use cold email to send automated or personalized i will say automated or personalized emails to prospects to just start a conversation. That's usually what you want to do. And I have a whole bunch of other training on cold email. So I'm not going to go into a long winded, here's how you do cold email. I've got a hundred videos on the channel, probably related to cold email, maybe not quite a hundred. Okay. But feel free to check some of those videos out. If you do want to get into cold email, highly recommend it. I would always start with automated cold email. If your market is big enough where you can test your copy. Okay. So, Testing your messaging first before you get into personalization, super helpful. But if you're just cold emailing and you just want to build some networking partnerships or some relationships, or you're going after really high ticket, personalized emails are definitely going to convert higher. It just takes more elbow grease. Okay. So when this is done right, you can really use it to generate more leads, right? That's what we're trying to do. The warning here, just a little tip is that you need to master email deliverability, particularly if you're going to do automated cold email. All right. That's the first thing. So that's the, usually the first failure point that I see. So master email deliverability, and I'm not going to go into it again. I have videos on the channel and our product solves a lot of email deliverability and we have a service to help you set this stuff up. But this is the main thing after that, where I see people fail is they don't 
test enough. They don't test enough copy. They don't test enough lead lists, okay? And they don't pick winners and losers and then start to optimize for conversions for the long term. What's this mean? Let me show you an example, okay? This is an actual campaign of ours. I removed the name up here because I don't want to tell people necessarily the markets I'm going after. So this name, I don't want to dox myself with, with the markets I'm going after. All right. I don't need my competitors knowing that information. All right. So in this one, we've got a thousand leads. We've generated so far nine interested. And at the time of this recording, it's June 27th, 2024. You can see this was last updated then. All right. Open rates won't get into open rates. Vastly inaccurate. We're targeting some slightly bigger companies who are using Microsoft and custom email servers. So your open rates aren't going to be all that accurate. But what I want to dive into is for this campaign anyway, we're getting a 4% reply rate and a 16% interested rate. Okay. This could be better, but we're testing some messaging and I'm going to show you in just a second. All right. So nine interested and interested, the way we do it inside of upticks aren't positive replies. These are people that actually said I am interested. Okay. So it's just short of a booking effectively. So we book a lot of these. Now we're not tracking our deals back to the sequence at this point in time. We're just not. So shame on us, but we should. But interested to correlate it with like other platforms are using positive replies. So the interested rate, their positive replies are inflated. All right, so let me show you why testing is important. So in this one, we're running currently four different tests. Looks like we have a B and C and D test that maybe got archived or something. But let's take a look here. So I've got four variations running at any given time. They've all sent just under 300, right? We can look at a reply. So 4%, 2%, 3%, 4%. Okay. Well, let's look at interested because that's really what we're looking for. 36%, four interested is on this one, zero on this one, two on this one. So this is at a point where we should archive these two versions. All right. And that would have actually improved our interested rates, having focused on maybe just these two. So we're getting pretty close to, to archiving these, but we ran it with a thousand leads. All right. So you want to test this with like a thousand leads. And then once you pick some winners, then you go get some more leads and then you just use the variations that are converting higher. And then you keep doing that. Okay. So that's a little mini, you know, cold email training. All right. The next thing is cold calling. So making direct calls to potential leads to introduce your product or service, right? And contrary to what some people are saying is cold calling is still an effective way to get decision makers, get more bookings. All right. Now you might want to prepare a compelling script, help handle objections. And another smarter way to do it is to pair it with email. Okay. So you can target the people you're emailing after you've emailed them and then call them. They've maybe gotten warmed up to your messaging, so to speak. Okay. And a little growth hack here is to focus on local businesses. All right. So that's one that we really crushed with my agency lead engine. We focus on local businesses and we got a great booking rate. We hit about a 2% booking call to booking rate, a good call to booking ratio, which is like how many times do you make a phone call and how many bookings do you get? Right? So bookings divided by calls, basically 1% is a good metric. If you want to increase your connection rate, so big problem that you're going to experience with cold calling is that you're going to make calls and your connection rate might be 5%, 10%, something like it depends on, right? It all varies based on where you're at, your lead list, healthier phone numbers, all that kind of stuff. But if you wanted to increase your connect rates, which then could thus increase your call to booking ratio, all right? You could look at a tool called phone ready leads. So I, I know the founder over there, Joey Gilkey, good dude. And they have a service and product that basically qualifies your list for you. So then you're only calling the people that are more inclined to actually pick up the phone. So if you're stretched thin for time might be a good solution. All right. So that's cold calling. Then of course you got LinkedIn outreach to build connections with obviously other professionals on LinkedIn. It's a great channel. I look at LinkedIn as more like the third channel in B2B because there's limits on LinkedIn for reaching out to people. There's risks with doing things like LinkedIn automation, so on and so forth. So what I actually like to do is I actually like to pair my content LinkedIn strategy with then outreach. So I outreach on LinkedIn to more or less just build connections with people I want to connect with. And then my content strategy helps me get into their newsfeed. Okay. So that's how I do it. So that's outbound. Now let's get into inbound outbound. All right. So when we combine inbound with then an outbound strategy, we can really, really maximize our results. 
Okay, so when you combine our YouTube, you know, our paid ads, right, our email marketing, and we have that funnel, right? So when people come in, they now they've raised their hand and they said, I'm interested to some degree, or at least I want to learn this thing that you're teaching, right? And we ask them for their information, then we can combine outbound with it. So the first thing here, of course, a pillar, and of course, any inbound is email nurturing. So get an inbound lead. Now let's do outbound to them. And outbound in this sense is nurturing, right? So it's not a cold email, it's a warm email. So what you wanna do is develop an automated sequence to nurture leads over time, okay? It's gonna help you keep stay top of mind, give you brand recognition for your potential leads, and then guide, guiding them through some buyer's journey with relevant content and offers. Here is our pillar email nurturing sequence. It's very long. It's like over 20 something steps, maybe 30. I'm not hundred percent positive. I'd have to look, but uh, it, it produces traffic, right? Let's minimize this. It produces traffic and it gets people indoctrinated a little bit more in our offer. Of course, not everyone's going to eat open emails. Not everyone's always going to take action, right? But it's about staying top of mind. The thing people usually do is they get too impatient with a lot of these nurturing lead generation strategies and they want to get something immediately. But it, most people aren't ready to buy something immediately. Most people aren't ready to hop on a call with you immediately, right? And I showed you in my, my tracking up above that, you know, our bookings, right? We're, this is about 25%. So about 25% of people are ready to book a call the, of the leads for our offer. But of course, then you've got, you've got drop off at every stage, right? So you need to nurture people. And one of the best ways to do that is with email, okay? So here's my email nurturing, some of my stats. Uh, again, open rates, not all that accurate. Okay, 43%, 8% click rate. Obviously, I'm getting a pretty good click rate here on email number one, and then it kind of drops off. So I'm sending them back to you know a page, something like that. We're not really optimizing for replies, so we're not even trying to get replies. We're not even optimizing for interested. So intersteds are stemmed from replies. So since we're not trying to get replies, we're not really gonna get interested because these people have to reply back interested, right? But we're more or less just sending them back trying to the websites, trying to get them to sign up for the software, so on and so forth. But you got to nurture people. All right. That's part of the game. So create a pillar email sequence for your inbound marketing funnel and keep adding emails to the end of it. All right. A little hack here, a little tip is if you are doing also a newsletter, you could leverage that same copy and then put it into your pillar email nurturing sequence. Okay. You just need to adapt it. So you don't want it to sound like a newsletter. Okay. So there's just some slight tweaks in messaging, but the content's still there. All right. So that's email. Then you have warm calling. So what you want to do is follow up with your leads who show interest that in your content, that pillar funnel, right? And also for us, like we have a software, so people sign up and we get phone numbers and all that kind of stuff. All right. But you want to pick up the phone. A lot of people convert on the phone. So basically what you want to do, of course, make sure is that I'm not going to go over that. Let me show you this. This is this is ours. So in the last 30 days here, we've made about 1,700 phone calls. We've booked 48 meetings, I guess. Okay, so that's pretty good. All right. So a little another little growth hack, and I don't see a lot of people doing this because it it does increase your lead cost and increase friction with your marketing funnels. But ask for a phone number. Now you can email them. So if you're getting email, that's a standard and you're getting phone number, now you can also call them. And then of course you can also SMS them. That's coming up next. And if you wanted to save some of your time, you could use the tool like Uptix to validate the phone numbers for accuracy and reduce about 15 to 25% of your calls that are maybe inaccurate phone numbers, right? Because people are gonna give you inaccurate phone numbers in your inbound marketing. All right, so that's warm calling and you can get great results from that. And then you've got SMS automation. So use SMS to nurture. It's basically just like just like email, right? So and SMS has high open rates. Although you can't track open rates with SMS, there's been you know stats about people actually opening SMS messages and, and stuff like that. Okay. But what I would encourage you to do is use it similar to email marketing. However, make it more personal and generate more bookings via direct response conversations. So approach them like you're a human, okay? Don't like make it like a marketing thing. Make it actually sound like a real person is texting them, all right? You just want to start a conversation and then take it from there. All right, now kind of a new and exciting one at the time of this video, anonymous visitor outreach has become very popular, okay? What it is, is it basically identifies the people who are visiting your website, 
the people and gives you data and email and, and some tools are even given phone numbers. This is, I think, is pretty much only available in the U.S. due to like GDPR and stuff like that. But you can use the tool to de-anonymize your website visitors to allow you to follow up with potential leads who have shown interest in, in your content but haven't quite given you their information. So this is like a step above cold email. All right, they haven't actually willingly given you their information, but they've been on your site. And when people are on your site, sometimes they just get busy, right? They don't sign up, they don't take the action. They might not be interested too, but they're better leads to go after usually than cold because they've already showed some sort of interest. So you can send traffic to your website and then get information and then reach out more highly, more targeted. You could use a tool like RB2B or Bounce Capture that help identify these people. And at the time of this recording, Bounce Capture gives you more data and visibility at the time of this recording. I also happen to know the founder there and full transparency is also a customer of ours, okay? And the way we do this is once the lead comes in, we have a couple paths that we send the lead down. So if they we have the email address, we do one thing. If we don't have the email address, we do another thing. So we might reach out on LinkedIn since we don't have their email. But if we have their email, we're gonna reach out to them there first, okay? So we manage our workflow for the sales team using a sequence. All right, I've got a couple other quick bonuses for you. So hang tight with me here. First of all, understand this is a lot that I just went over and Rome was not built in a day. So you need to chip away at these over the course of time. And you're going to need to hire people to help you, right? I'm still in this process of, of doing it, having people help me and, and building out our team here. Okay. And continuously test and optimize your strategies. Okay. These are like pillar lead generation strategies. These aren't like growth hacks or gimmicks that I've given that are gonna be here today and then gone tomorrow. You know, things of course, trends change and all this kind of stuff, but you wanna stay agile. These things at least have kind of de-risked it, kind of, all right? Leverage data and analytics to understand your audience and refine your approaches across all channels and mediums and invest in training for your sales and marketing team to keep their skills sharp and up to date and make sure you hire, okay? So those are my bonus tips. If you got a lot of value from this content, please like and share and consider subscribing to the channel. And if you found these tips really helpful and you want to take your lead generation to the next level, then I'd invite you to check out Uptix where we provide a comprehensive platform that combines a lot of these strategies into one to help you increase your bookings and do your personalized outreach, automate follow-ups, track all your success in one place. And you can sign up for a free trial or even our free plan that we have by going to uptix.io or clicking this link in the Notion docket, document, all right? So I appreciate your time and attention today. I hope this video was helpful and we'll see you in the next one.